Hi, today I'm going to be creating a cross-shaped tenon and mortise splice and differently to all my other joint videos I'm going to be using a piece of wood which isn't squared all round. In fact I think you can see none of its faces are actually flat. So how am I going to make the joint a reasonably good fit? Well, I've found what's probably the, the straightest surface on here, and I've given it a little mark so I remember what it is. Mark it out. I'm going to use a tri square for a lot of the marking out, but I can't obviously use it off these surfaces because they're not flat and they're not square to each other. So, my reference is going to be the end surface, which I've sawn off square to, or as square as possible to. Uh, this the best surface along the length. So I've got one flat surface at, at both ends. So I'll be using my tri-square with the stock up against the end. I can use that all the way round. And also I'll be using my marking gauge again with the stock on the end. So I'm going to do most of my marking off from there. The only difficulty is I've got to create a cross on the end and I want the cross to be as square as possible. So we'll cover that as we get there. So first of all I want to lay in a cross on this end. Actually both ends are going to be the same layout. It would just be removing a different material. So I'm lucky enough to have a ruler which is a steel rule which is obviously parallel edges and is roughly a third of the width of the component so I'll use that for my marking out. This is my reference side if you remember the, the one side which is the the least out of uh, flat as possible so any measurements I'm going to take with the stock on the on the face or the edge of the work is going to be off that side everything else the stock will be on this end. So first of all I want to Great, a couple of lines across the middle here to start the cross. So I'll square off that end and I want to go a ruler's width off from the end, like so. I'll mark it in pencil, but I'll come across and do it with a knife as well. So I've got my one line in, now I need one same distance this way. So about there. Now to make a decent cross I want uh, these two lines to be at right angles to those. Check my rule, see that that is actually square and work like so. Now on this end I'll create the cross so I'll be removing waste from the corners and leaving the cross behind on the other end, I'll transfer the same measurements that I've got here to the other end and I'll be removing the cross section. How deep do I go? Well that's where the marking gauge comes in. I'm going to go roughly an inch and I know this is a flat surface so I can mark that inch all the way around using the marking gauge stock up against the end. Squaring the lines of the cross down the sides quite easy because we can use the stock of the tri-square directly on this flat surface. Now interestingly, uh, this end of the wood has actually shrunk less than the other end. 
So rather than just using the ruler for taking all my measurements off, I'm going to have to measure directly from here to get the points that I'm going to be putting these crosses in. So the actual cross needs to be the same width from here to here and from there to there on this end as it is on the other end. And this area of waste will be very slightly different because of the different amount of shrinkage that's occurred at that end. With it all marked out it should be quite clear to see which bits are being removed. So I'm just going to define these lines a bit better. Make a knife wall to begin with. So I'm just deepening the knife lines that I made and in fact a lot of this waste is going to need to be chiselled out anyway because we're going into a, a square corner and uh, quite possibly originally Japanese would have cut these entirely with chisels and uh, actually I might do one of the corners like that just to see whether it's any quicker or not once I've done that I've done the one at the back there come in with a saw I can saw the diagonal of the square sorry a cube I'm taking a cube out and I can saw this diagonal take away the half of that cube Now if I go for this one as simply using a chisel to go the whole way, uh, we'll continue to deepen that knife line on both sides of the cube there. But you see the idea is we're, we're working deeper and deeper and eventually we'll meet up in the far corner. So you can see that I've paired and chopped right up into the corner there, corner of the cross, and uh, now I can remove the, the rest of the waste quite easily. Now I've paired down and I'm close to the knife line, but uh, before I finish that off, I'm going to cut the other side of the joint so that I can then pare down the final amount and try fitting the two pieces as I go so I'll make a nice well fitted joint. But, uh, this side is now nice and clean I'll just clean up this face approaching the knife line repeat for the other four and then we'll get on to the other end of the joint. This is quite soft and punky in here, so it's, uh, it's breaking out quite a lot. Now with both parts of the joint roughed out, one on each end, I can cut one end off and do a final fit between the two parts. A little cleaning up. And because it's symmetrical, you can rotate it and it'll go together in four different ways. The crossed mortise and tenon splice joint. Ideal for extending weight-bearing posts. Give it a go.